so far in this series we have walked through the ssd 1306 data sheet and built a universal platform independent oled library in c designed to work seamlessly across microcontrollers now it's time to put that library into action in this video we will integrate it on the popular esp idf platform and in a later video we will also cover stm32 QIDE. We will cover the full setup required to get the SST1306 library running on ESP32 and learn how to control a single pixel on the OLED display using IDF platform. A foundational step toward building custom graphics, text, or even full UI elements. If you haven't watched the previous parts of this series, I highly recommend checking them out first to get the complete context. Namaste and welcome to Avinashi Tech. Here, we dive deep into embedded systems, decode data sheets, build real world projects, and demystify microcontrollers and communication protocols. If embedded tech excites you, be sure to subscribe and join me on this journey. Let's start with the ESP32 and the IDF platform. First, I will open up VS Code and create a new IDF project. Next, I will copy over the common source files we discussed in the previous section and update the ESP32 specific code. Let's begin with the SPI.C file. So ESP32 comes with four hardware SPI peripherals, but SPI0 and SPI1 are already used internally by the flash memory. That leaves us with two options, that is HSPI and VSPI. In this project, we are using HSPI. By default, HSPI uses MOSI on GPIO 13 and CLOCK on GPIO 14. Other non-SPI control pins like CS, DC and RESET can be assigned to any available GPIOs. We have assigned it to pins which are shown here. In the SPI init function, we start by initializing the members of the SPI bus config structure. We specify the MOSI and clock pins and define the maximum data transfer size in bytes. Next, we call SPI bus initialize to set up the SPI bus using this configuration. After that, we set up the SPI device interface config structure. Here, we define clock speed as 10 MHz, SPI mode as mode 0 in which clock polarity is equal to zero, which means ideally the clock is low. Clock phase is also zero, which means data is captured on the leading edge. Finally, we call SPI bus add device to register our device with these settings. In the SPI transfer function, we first check if the SPI device handle is valid. If it is valid, we configure the SPI transaction structure in which the length is set in bits. The TX buffer points to the display buffer and the RX buffer is set to null since we don't expect any data back. To transmit, we use SPI device transmit function. In the functions below, that is SPI reset, SPI set CS and SPI set DC, we use GPIO set level to control respective pins, setting them to logic low or high as needed. Now, in the SSD1306.c file, for microsecond level delays, we use the ETS delay US function. Inside the OLED begin function, we also need to initialize the non SPI GPIOs by calling GPIO init. We do this using the GPIO config structure. We set the pin bit mask for all the required pins, set the mode to output and apply the configuration using gpio config function api. In our main source file, we define the width as 128, height as 64, which are standard dimensions for our OLED display. Inside the app main function, we begin by initializing the display driver using the OLED begin function. Then we pass the screen width, height, the switch cap VCC macro, to enable the charge pump and finally set the reset flag to true. 
Next, we clear the display buffer using OLED clear display. To test our setup, we will draw a single white pixel at the coordinates x equal to 10 and y equal to 10 using OLED draw pixel. Then, we call OLED display to push the buffer on the screen. This simple code will light up one pixel on our OLED. Let's build the code and flash it to the ESP32 board. Ta-da! That tiny dot should now be visible on your display. Let's take it one step further. I've added a few more lines of code to draw the character H using multiple OLED draw pixel at carefully chosen coordinates. This will light up only the necessary pixels to form the letter. Let's build it, flash it and watch the screen. Voila! There it is. The letter H rendered perfectly using individual pixels. In this video, we customized the code library for the ESP32 using the ESP IDF, adding SPI communication and platform specific utilities like delays. After flashing the code, the display worked just as expected. In the next video, we will repeat the same process for the STM32 black pill board using STM32 cube IDE. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video, share it with others and subscribe to Avinashi Tech for more embedded content. This is Avinashi Tech, signing off.